and welcome to another episode of the Personalization Experience podcast with me, Richard Askham. Uh, again, the sun is shining. It's I, I must sit here more often. This is where obviously the sun shines in my eyes. So that's two episodes in a row now. Maybe we're on a roll for this winter. Um, I'm joined today by my very special guest, uh, Bernd Zipper. Good afternoon, Bernd. Hey, good afternoon, Richard. Thank you for having me. So I have a blue sky here as well. It's a little bit stormy, but blue sky in Germany at this point. That's good. You know what? <laughs> if nothing else, we've covered the European weather forecast for the next 24 hours. So thank you for tuning in. And the- <laughs> it's, it's for free, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So listen, Bert, it's lovely to see you. You and I saw each other in person back in, I think it was in March um, in, where were we? Um Somewhere in the Netherlands, I think. Somewhere in the Netherlands, you know. Let's yeah. keep. Uh, unfortunately, but this 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 place was so small. The the hotel and the conference was big, it was huge. Yeah. It was from VIGC, the, the um, I think the both, yeah. Yes. And um, uh, so the Belgium online print event, and uh, but the, the the venue, the place, I, I didn't remember the, the the town. So, but anyway, it was a. Really a cool conference. I, like. I, I do remember the the one abiding memory I have was that arriving at, at Schiphol Airport um, and being sold a train ticket to get to that small town, uh, yeah. but they didn't actually tell me there was a train strike. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so exactly. I, and, then, and then so I had a train ticket, but no train. So that was nice. But by the way, if you are talking about uh, personalization, have you tried out the? Uh, there's one thing at Schiphol. I think it was. I think it was in Schiphol or Barcelona. No, I think it was Schiphol. So there's a there's a screen, a big screen, and if you walk through the screen, um, uh, there's a camera on the top, and um, uh, the screen inserts a jacket. So that means um, you ju- uh, you go pass through the, the, the screen, and um, uh, the screen realizes that you are there in person, and uh, uh, gives the video picture a special uh, jacket, and you can buy immediately by your phone. See, so see, that's, uh, that's, this that's, is this is something quite uh, quite sexy. Yeah, I, I, that's this is not perfect, of course. Yeah, so so maybe the head is too small or whatever, <laughs> and the fit of the jacket is not. But it looks like so. For example, if you never had a leather jacket, for example, uh, this this gives you impression. Oh, I can wear a leather jacket here. Yeah. So I was really impressed about it. I think I like it was simple. Yeah, I, I like that, and that and that's a beautiful way into our conversation today, Bernd. So so thank you um, for for providing me with that example because it's it's a it's a really good example of how personalization as a whole has moved on, yeah. and, and you know part of the the sort of context for the personalization experience show at Vespa. Uh, which is going to be in March in Amsterdam, and you're joining us as a speaker. So thank you very much for that. Is really to get that conversation moving forward. And in, in, mm-hmm. you know, I, I still think, and you and I have spoken about this before. I still think the print industry still sees personalization as labeling, um, and and and, yes. has, and and you know, and hasn't really moved. You know, and in many ways, it's kind of not their fault because, in many ways, brands still see it as labeling. Mm-hmm. So. So it's almost been put in a pigeonhole and stayed in that pigeonhole. How how can we get that pigeon out of that hole? You, you know, uh, at the end, um, it's quite easy. If it's fun for the customer, the customer will love it. If the customer loves it, you make money with it. Yeah. Um, no love, more money. So that's an old game. Anyway, so um, uh, if you see that uh, a lot of printers really understand personalization, like I'm printing a name on it and the address, and then I mail it to someone. Um, this is not personalization. This is uh, just labeling with addresses. <laughs> so uh, personalization for me is that um, I have three stages. or let's say four stages. One stage is, uh, yes, I find my name on the product. Let's say there's, there's a mark and my name, Bernd, or your name, Riches, is on that mark. And you come uh, to a conference and you see a place and there's a mark with your name. And immediately it's your place. Yeah. And it's your mark. Yeah. So... Of course, we all know the marks from the uh, gas station. You know, there's, there's always in the corner, there's a, there's a large stand. You can buy pre-printed marks. Yeah? <laughs> so with Richard Burns, um, Sophia or whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it's not, it's the first stage of personalization. The second stage would be that also your family name would be on the mark. So that means it's a real personalization. And the third stage would be your picture would be there also. And the f- and the next stage would be, for example, if something that you really like, like I, I assume you're, you're ah, if I look into your face, you're a drinker, you like, you like to drink wine, right? I'm <laughs> just kidding. I, I've never been so insulted in all my life. <laughs> yes, I'm just kidding. So um, um, uh, it's the wrong name in English. Yeah, in Germany we say we are drinkers. 
anyway, so um, let's assume you're, you you love to drink wine like me do, uh, like I do. Uh, so uh, you have your picture, your name, your family name, and maybe something about wine or something special on it. And the same moment, this is not only a mug. This is something you will never throw away. And let's think uh, think about a notebook, yeah, um, uh, or sketchbook or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, if you get a, a sketchbook with Richard on, you say, "Oh, it's reprinted cool." <laughs> if your name is on that, they say, "Oh, they prepared it for me." The mm -hmm. next stage is if there's something, for well, let's say, um, in, the insert is with all the holidays in Great Britain, yeah, not in Germany, in Great Britain, and your birthday is also in the calendar. Um, exactly it's 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 a notice that they know you have a birthday on this and this and this and so this is personalization mm. for printed products for example mm. and um this is in my opinion the best way how we can attract this uh to the people because if the people love it it's cool and there's one example and um, i'm tired to talk about that but you you I, we talked about that cereal company um um in, in germany my muesli they do yeah. uh uh, complex and stuff like that so they started to personalize cereals Is it, that's the right name yeah cereals yes. yep yeah so so breakfast stuff and so on yep and um uh and they they have huge tubes and uh you have the opportunity you have the opportunity to order your personalized muesli yeah yep. so and with that you can personalize it i do always chocolate 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 so that's okay and uh, then i have my muesli and on the back there was a small label and that's uh, I, you could type in your your name and so it's burns muesli and it's with chocolate that's it and then we saw this is not lovely this is nothing the people really love and then we start over to design the label that means in the same moment i order chocolate 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 and so on uh they, they offer me uh, of course the uh, all the in, uh, informations i need by law so that means about the sugar and protein and all the stuff and of course uh, I have something like a taste uh, traffic light, so it's more about chocolate. It's not about fruits, <laughs> and so on. And and so it gives you a little bit of impression that this label is made for you, yeah, and it's personalized for you, because you can also personalize the design a little bit, and then you really are into the process of personalization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is what the customer needs to understand that if he's part of a game. And if we, as, as a printer, we need to understand that if we make the customer to part of a game, he can create something. He will be a semiconductor or whatever to build up this 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 uh, printed process or this printed um, uh, flyer box, whatever. Yep. Then it's his product. Yeah, and that and that's the key, isn't it? And you know what yeah. you, what you've described there in those four steps, Bern, is how you take a personalized product and then individualize it. And, exactly. and one one of the outcomes of, of of the first edition of the personalization experience in in Munich was that 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 word that p word means different things to different people, yeah. and and my contention and and I might be right I don't know but um is that that the print industry has stayed at stage one, and it's delivered labels with names on and and that's fine and everybody's gone this is great but they haven't actually developed beyond that. And and brands, as a result, don't know that they've developed beyond that. So there is this communication. Yeah, Richard, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Richard. It, it depends a little bit. So if I look into Germany, the Germany market um, or German market on mass customization, uh, there, there's a uh, there's a huge movement at this point. So we we have uh, the PPA and uh, they they come together to to encourage printers to to be better in personalization, um, programmatic printing alliance, and and they they do a lot of stuff and. Um, um, uh, uh, they are pretty technical, but they do a good a lot of stuff to make printers understand personalization is more than a name on it. So, yeah. okay, that's point number one. Number two is um, we see that over the pressure of our times, that means cost pressure about paper, about storage, about time to market, about uh, printing on demand, we see that mass customization is the key for the printing industry to become more valuable. Yep. So that means, for example, I can I can make you uh, hundreds of envelopes of your name on it, but at the end you need ten in a year <laughs> yeah, or yeah. twenty. Yeah. So if you're and maybe if you're not so lazy like me, you need hundreds of envelopes of your name on that. Yeah. So why don't you provide your customers just one hundred envelopes? Yeah. You yeah. can do that, yeah. but you're still as a printer, you're still in the movement in your head. 
everything counts in large amounts and that's yeah, crap yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so we need to understand as more as we are specialized as more as we are personal as more money we can ask for <laughs> and that, and, you, know, you see this in so many different walks of life burn don't you that, that yeah. you know and price breaks as that as you know as we call them that always reduce as the volume goes up well actually yeah. it should always increase as the volume goes down and that's the, i know that's the same thing but it's it's just how you see it and i i think the industry has always been and and in many ways remains predisposed to let's see how many we can do because that will yeah. that will cost less and and it shouldn't be about costing less it should be about adding value mm -hmm. you know um on our conference i will show you a little bit about the numbers for example we we looked into the numbers of uh, in germany austria and switzerland how mass customization developed and nowadays we see that's nearly 15 percent of a no 18 percent of a complete turnover in the printing industry in germany austria and switzerland that's mass customization Wow. And um, uh, that's a lot. And um, to be honest, um, I'm a little bit proud of it because I'm German. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, anyway, so um, you see there's a movement coming on and the people are now learning that this is important. And um, um, also the, 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 the users of that. So that means not only the end customer, also brands understand it's, it's, it's very important. But look at Adidas, look at Puma. Now you can customize your shoes, for example, mm -hmm. with your name on it, with a name box and a label box and so on. So that's pretty cool. And this gives something, yeah, a, a real new value. Yeah. And oh, um, especially for Puma, it's very important. <laughs> anyway, so um, uh, we have a great movement in this direction. You know, Richard, we, 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 to we talk about mass customization, I think, since we were out of school. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, uh, and since that time, we see the opportunities and the chances of that. But nowadays, we see that there's a need for that. Yes, <laughs> well, it's, 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 cons it's consumer led burn, isn't it? Because, you know, yeah. one, one of the things that I guess, and it's 10 years ago next year, by the way, since since uh, Sherry Cook, and that was kind of like where where this whole world, this new world of brands offering customization yeah. and personalization came from. Um, you know, so in that 10 years, an, an awful lot has changed uh, in, in all of our worlds. And, and you mentioned about uh, Adidas there and, and, uh, and, and Puma, um, you know, and, and consumers these days, especially young consumers, will almost want to co-brand uh, with, yeah. you know, they want their name on it, but they want it next to Nike or they want mm -hmm. it next to Adidas and what have you. But yeah. that's all entirely possible. And, and of course, the consequence of that is we, we talk about mass customization, but it, the million ones, if you like, cre create that mass customization. Don't they? It's just a different way of looking at it. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I'm very happy that uh, also FESPA is doing something like a, a yeah, mass customization uh, conference on this special area. I looked at that in May in, in Munich and... Um, uh, so I that was, was me, by the way. Yeah. I was I was that host. So uh, uh, yeah, but uh, why didn't you invite me? I, I'm living next door. So uh... you, you, were too, <laughs> you were too you were too good, Bernd. We did we couldn't afford you basically. <laughs> anyway, so to me it was uh, it was a good idea. Um, uh, my tip to Fespa would be don't put it in the, in the very far corner. So put it in the, put it in the middle. So that's very important because this is how our business will be. Um, improve in the next years. So mass customization will be one of the keys for the success of the surviving of a whole printing industry. And if a printer does not understand that, he will probably on the other side of the list. And, and um, because the ages are turning and even big, uh, even printers, you know, I, we are working as a consultancy for, for uh, huge printers. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we, have, we have customers where we make, they are not traditional online printers. We are also working for online printers, but traditional companies with a huge turnover and they have still the DNA of huge amounts. Mm. That means uh, uh, a lot of copies and this and this. And now they start to rethink. And now they start to see that might be by the, you know, amber, um, uh, the, 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 the environmental, no, not environmental, so, so about, um, sorry for mixing up my English again. Okay. Um, so it's 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 um, you know we have a pressure uh, to be um, to have a look what's going on with the nature and to, we have a pressure to, to see see all the environmental um, yeah. um, um, things we have that means yeah. like uh, chemicals like logistics and so on yeah and yeah. sometimes it's better to have new content that mean uh, to print near to the customer that does not mean every street needs a printer but every town for example mm -hmm. to split. Uh, um, uh, complete copies uh, um, and, 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 and um, 
production chains um, uh, so that the uh, that we are not printing one um, uh, turnover one one big setup in one uh, town and send it out we yep. print it in different towns yep. and then we can use that to personalize mass production flyers yep. with mass customization information yeah and uh, there are new concepts coming up i will show something like that on, on uh, our uh, in my speech yeah well i'm, um, I'm, I'm to I'm... give you an impression about that Thank you. I'm really looking forward to that. And, and that, of course, is coming up in March. Um, so yep. we're going to be at the RAI at, uh, in Amsterdam uh, in March for FESPA. So you, you mentioned yep. about don't put us in a corner. I've been very demanding this year, uh, Bernd, and I've asked for um, a, a theatre space that we can do in the round and that people can feel part of this conversation. I, I, I'm very cautious with, yep. with events like this, that, that it feels as though it's a participation conversation uh, event, yep. not just speaker and an and audience so we will hopefully be be surrounded by people with lots of questions as well and and just before we finish today um what would you like not not specifically to say at, at that event but also what would you what would you like people to hear what what do you want them to take away from you know this is a focused event all about personalization fest yeah. brilliant job of bringing that forward as a concept but it's only any good if people go away going, ah, yeah, I, I hear that now. I see I see the way. What would you like them to hear? You know, um, there's one combination. That's, that's online print. By the way, the online print symposium um, in Germany will be on March 14 and 15 uh, in 2024 as well in yeah. Munich. So yep, yep. Um, maybe if you have time, let me know. So yeah, indeed. Always, <laughs> and, always uh, because to... uh, there we're talking about online print and uh, artificial intelligence. And what I want to see is, um, or what I expect to the people to understand is that online print and an online shop is the foundation for good mass customization personalization yeah. tool. Yeah, that's point one. Point two is mass customization is crap if it's not intelligent. So let's use artificial intelligence to make it more efficient and quicker and faster and more reliable. So. And if we can bring this together, online and artificial intelligence and mass customization, this is the step into a new age of printing production. And um, and uh, I'm sure we are not talking about that in two years anymore, because then it's there. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that's going to be fascinating to to have that discussion in the room uh, in March. Uh, Bernd, it's been an absolute pleasure to, to see you. I'm, I'm glad you're feeling better. I know we planned to do this a week ago, but you've been um, quite poorly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to see you bouncing back from that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please say thank you to Bernd Zipper, CEO of Zipcon Consulting, who's been my guest today. Bernd, thank you so much. So thank you for having me. Thank you very much.